24 hours of the best show. At 5.30, I was yawning, and I was just like, oh, this is not good. <laughs> 5.30. You catch a second win after 5.30, though. I'm going to catch eight wins. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got an exciting uh, a duo, a tandem in the studio. Uh, we got Carl Tart. How hey, are you, Carl? I'm always good. How you doing? Oh, I'm great. So thanks for coming by. This is so exciting. We've we've done virtual shows together yeah. multiple times. Never in person. Whether it be uh, the flagrant ones mm-hmm. or you were on Double Threat yes. with me and Julie Klausner. And then one of my favorite people, Kevin Bartelt. Hi, Tom. How are you? My youngest brother. Look, I love <laughs> Kevin. You and I have been through a lot. <laughs> we have. I have. I've. Here's an idea, Head Kevin. We're going to do this on an up, on an upcoming double threat. We're going to Great. do and Brett, Brett, can you hear this, Brett? Brett, yeah, can, can you? I want you to. You can talk on some of this <laughs> if you don't mind. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Brett, what we're going to do on an up upcoming episode of Double Threat, which is on the Forever Dog Network. Oh, I love it. Kevin shuts the door. That's like a real judgment on Brett. <laughs> like, oh, uh, thank. Well, you know, you can get. <laughs> It's you know, actually bad for the sound. Noise in the hallway can mess up the show. And the thing. But, Brett, we're going to do a show. It's going to be a tribute to podcast producers. <laughs> and I want to do almost an award show. Yeah. Most, most bedraggled, <laughs> <laughs> um, meanest insult, <laughs> like, <laughs> like most insulted. The categories like just get because something these are the things I'm noticing these trends. This who gets picked on in society teachers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Non-white dudes. (laughs) Fair enough to say non-white dudes at the top of the pyramid subset teachers. I can put right next to teachers podcast producers. Yeah. Garbage man. Sorry. Garbage men get picked up. Garbage men. But I'll say this. When I was six, I didn't want to be a podcast producer. I wanted to be a garbage man. Tom, I did I did as well. Car- when they would drive by my house riding on the back of the truck. I'm telling you, if I could have signed a contract at seven that said you can hang out on garbage trucks, you could just <laughs> get you pick through the stuff with the garbage man. Yeah. But the trade off is then you have to like be a garbage man for 30 years. I've you signed like, a 30-year sign? sign? deal. I, I would. You held up a, a vest, a safety <laughs> vest. <laughs> the, get me a little a little <laughs> mini safety vest. Yeah. <laughs> I would have signed that contract. I was obsessed with garbage men. Yeah. How about you, Kevin? Uh, I wanted to be on the outside, like sketching. I played a lot of Tony Hawk, and so I liked that they were just hanging out on the outside of the trucks. So you wanted... Uh, you wanted to know a friendly garbage man who would let you hang off the back of his truck. I wanted, yeah. You didn't want to be a garbage he didn't man. Be a garbage, he didn't yeah. want to put in the work. That driver, when I would get ready for school in the morning, that driver would drive by and the guy that jumps mm-hmm. off the back of the truck and grabs the trash can yeah. would always say, what's up? He yeah. would always, hey, I just thought that man was the coolest. Coolest thing ever. I would just want to like be in the yard and be like, oh, hey. Yeah. As if I wasn't waiting all day for the garbage, for garbage man to garbage show up. Man, yeah. I want to be on hey. the back of the truck, and then the driver gets out, and then he gets mm-hmm. it, but I'm still on the outside. I can wave to everyone. Okay. You don't want to be I'm the- kind of gu- like the mayor of the garbage truck. <laughs> <You> wanna, yeah. <laughs> I, I still, these are the things I, I wanted in my life, and two, two things were two dreams I had. One is impossible now, was growing up in New Jersey, you'd go through the Holland Tunnel to go into New York, mm-hmm. and as a kid- there was these tracks on the side of the tunnel that there would be these little carts. Mm-hmm. And once in a while, you'd be going through the Holland Tunnel, and suddenly this cart would zip by on the side. There'd be some some worker like working the Holland Tunnel in this little cart. Zzz, it's on a little track mounted to the side of the thing. I was just like, one day I want to ride in that cart. They're gone now. The carts are gone. They, they pulled the carts. They're gone. I had I I re, well it's not recently anymore I guess about thirteen years the first time I ever went to the East Coast <laughs> so I never saw that yeah 
but that sounds tight. That sounds oh. like something. You know, the other authoritarian position that I wanted to be in as a child was a school bus driver. My school bus oh. driver's name was Mr. Tim, mm -hmm. and he was real cool. Yeah. And I was like, I want that job too. And I even had a a bus toy, like like a, a school bus toy. Okay. That's what I asked for for Christmas. And yeah. I would fill it up with all my like action figures and stuff. And sure. In a school bus. In a school bus and yeah. drive them around. But then you'd put one, would you put a figure in behind that wheel and be nah, like. No, that was for no, me. No, that was you. That was you were me. the figure. You had your so hand on that bus. I my own bus. figure. Yeah. I have a toilet paper roll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was always the thing. And it's so funny when like. You think about what's the messaging when these companies like sell toys that make kids want to work. Yeah. <laughs> like what are they pre are they preparing us for just like a life of servitude? Oh yeah. You know. The plastic packs of like firemen stuff or police stuff. Yeah. They're just yeah. like pick which service job you're going to get and start getting good at it now. Yeah. Cuz this is going to be your life. I wonder like and again, Kevin, we sure. all know you're insanely wealthy. Yeah, the I, I can't really relate to anything you guys are talking <laughs> yes. about. You, I'm doing some good acting, though. <laughs> you, you're just like, oh yes, yeah, I remember course. pretending I would work a <laughs> garbage man. Oh, garbage yeah. man. Yes, I've seen one. Kevin yeah, is Scrooge just, McDuck. Yeah, every day he dies. When, he, when we leave here tonight, he's gonna yeah. go home and dive in his money room. Yeah. Is my <laughs> Kevin, I feel like you probably grew up in one of the houses when you drive through certain neighborhoods and they wheel a dumpster out at, on garbage day. <laughs> like that's how big the house is. Like so, yeah. most houses have just like two garbage cans. Yeah. yeah. Regular garbage recycling. Uh -huh. Some will have four with a, like a garden. Grass. Yeah. Grass. Yeah. Recycling. Regular garbage. Maybe two regular garbage cans. But then these houses where they just wheel a dumpster down. That's how much yeah. waste they're creating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All what's plastic. Going on? Yeah. What's going on in that house? And they don't separate any of it. <laughs> no, it's all no. together. It's like, we all just together. throw it in the dumpster. Uh-huh. It's bottles and trash. Yeah. Now, the, what are what are the both of you up to? You both, uh, the flagrant ones is going strong? Flagrant ones going strong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, XOXO Gossip Kings. Mm -hmm. Me and my buddy Lamar Woods are rewatching. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm watching for the first time the whole Gossip Girl sure. series. And we chat about it. Sure. And it's how, a real good time. How deep into the run are you on that? Uh, deep season two. Almost done okay. with season two. We'll be done with season two soon. Are you hooked? I'm a little hooked. I ain't okay. going to lie to you. Yeah. I'm a little hooked. It, it, it Like, I hate it sometimes. Mm hmm. It's so stupid, so predictable. Yeah. And also, I'm like, I got to see what but happens. But you can't wait. Yeah. I got hooked so badly on um, Love Island UK. Because yeah. I'm not a big reality show person. But then my girlfriend was like, she's like, let's watch Love Island UK. People like it. I'm just like, all right, let's check this out. And then, like, first two episodes, it didn't exactly click in. I'm just kind of like, these reality shows are so stupid. Yeah. And then just whenever the light switch got thrown, I was suddenly just like, I really think that uh, Molly May and Tommy <laughs> have a thing. I think their relationship seems real. And like, I'll just be talking about it. And she's like, I think also she's looking at me just kind of like, oh man, you're more into it than, yeah. than you should be. Like I got, I got deeply into where I'm like, like when it's those things, cause there's 50 episodes in a season of Love Island. Mm -hmm. wow. 50. Way too many. Way too many. But there'll be points when I'm just like, you know, if I could kill one person on this planet, <laughs> it would be it would be Danny. How long are the episodes? Oh, they're 45 minutes long. They're, they're 50 of them, 45 minutes? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I can't take that many British accents as I sit here yeah. from Mississippi. I can't. I just can't take that many British accents. Because then sometimes they have like these British accents where you're just like, I don't know if that's a British accent or if you just. If you're the only person who talks that way. Yeah. Because there'll be people just like, that doesn't sound like any other accent I've ever heard. It's like, uh, yeah, but I'm hooked on it. And uh, so you got that going. You do uh, you you do the show with your cousin here, don't you? Sometimes. Often? We Sometimes? haven't been here in a long time. Okay, but you'll yeah. often sit in these same chairs. Often sit in these same chairs and talk the same shit. Mm -hmm. And Kevin produces that show as well. And yeah. uh, I think we've all found it easier to just keep it on Zoom. Okay. Because the show is called Carl Calls His Cousin. Yeah, not Carl sits across, Carl sits across, from, across his from his cousin. Yeah. I don't want to sit across from him. Yeah. 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 Like, get him on the phone, you know? Yeah. Uh-huh. Now- 
you, uh, Kevin, you hate basketball, right? I, I don't. I despise it. But I edit a basketball podcast, so I mm-hmm. listen about it every week. Sure. And do you feel like by osmosis, you have you developed rooting interests at no, all? No, I'm probably the opposite. Actually, you're more turned off than ever. Yeah. By it. Um. Yeah. But live sports, they're so fascinating. Mm-hmm. You, Hulu has them. Have you heard that? I I yeah, love Hulu that. Hulu has live sports. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you heard. Um. Well, Kevin. Some, is there a player you like, even just by hearing them be ta- getting sure. talked about? <laughs> Michael Jordan was like, oh, Michael, Michael Jordan, Jordan. Well, you're really going out on a limb with that one. I mean, I'm, oh, you think he's good, huh? I'm a Chicago guy, Tom. Yeah. You gotta, it's the first thing you gotta know about me. So, <laughs> I guess. growing up in the 90s with MJ <laughs> and going to the Oprah, yeah, yeah, the Michael Jordan Steakhouse, yeah, that's me seeing Oprah at Michael Jordan Steakhouse, yeah, spraying your Dude. Michael Jordan cologne on your neck, yeah. Oh, Windy City. So and there's the no Cologne con- Mist because it's so windy. <laughs> there's no contemporary player you have any affinity for that you think seems like an uh, an okay dude. Yeah, I mean LeBron James is LeBron like James prolific. James. Sure. I mean, I grew up in like the early aughts, so like seeing him play for the Pacers. <laughs> no, hell no. Pac- Can you imagine him Pacers in a Pacers wish. uniform? Wouldn't that be the funny? I love when you see, uh, like. Hakeem Olajuwon in the Raptors uniform, yeah. the final thing, or like Ewing in a in, in the Sonics, magic, the magic, the magic the uniform, Sonics. or the Sonics uniform. You're just mm-hmm. like, it just, you just, how much money did you really need to have to put that uniform? Like, I get it. Yeah. But it's still just like, it meant something that Patrick Ewing was always in like gold, or like blue and orange. Yeah. And now suddenly you see him in just this other. It's like he's yeah. trick or treating or he something. He didn't even get to play in those green Knicks jerseys. Remember those? Yeah, uh, the, yeah. The Knicks are good at the Knicks are good at one thing and not so good at another. The thing they're good at is uh, alternate uniforms. Oh, the yeah. thing they're not good at is uh, winning basketball. Yeah, basketball. <laughs> basketball. They tend to come up a little short yeah. on the basketball side of basketball. We're gonna see a lot more of that now. I I was reading Charles Oakley's book. Yeah. And uh, is is very and also I say reading. I was listening to it. Uh, You're allowed to say yeah, that. I, I think I'm reading. allowed to say read. I read it. I, I ingested the content, yeah. and so he talks a lot about how he never rested, how he never mm-hmm. no load management, no yeah. none of that. I yeah. we did. I don't care if my leg was half broke. I still went out there yeah. and played. It's like well, mm-hmm. that's dumb, man. You didn't care about your family. You didn't care about <laughs> your future. You didn't care about mm-hmm. anything. You just cared. Like you wanted to play for this old white dude that bad. Yeah, like, but he like, was he was so tough. When I I because I wrote for Slam Magazine for a bunch of years, wrote for Inside Stuff and Hoop mm-hmm. Magazine, so I would get to go to games and interview players after the game. And first of all, it's the greatest thing. It's, it's if you can ever do it, it's the greatest experience ever. That's my dream. You show up early. Yeah. You go right through the press entrance. You go in, they feed you right off the bat. Yeah. Here's food. Yeah. Really good food. Then you eat that good food. Then you walk to your seat, often courtside mm-hmm. behind or just a little up in a prime viewing spot. Then, Oh, it's halftime. I think I'll go get some cookies yeah. in the back in where the thing is. They have dessert for us now. You go get that. You watch. You go back and watch the second half of the game. Then you go in the locker room and you see the players there and you talk to them. And they're all naked. And they're all, well, not, I didn't go in the shower. Like, but it is so weird to Surprised. watch a guy sitting with a towel and he's like putting deodorant on. And people are just like, hey, what about the, like, I just think about like I just changed my shirt and I was just like made sure I shut the door. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't want to be accidentally seeing me Your change. Back. Yeah, seeing my back. These guys are toweling off with tape recorders shoved in their face. Yeah. It um, but still, that said, it's amazing. And when I saw Charles Oakley at a Knicks game, this is this was um late, late in his run. He might have not even been playing, he might have just been at the game. I can't remember. He was so wide. I never mm-hmm. saw a more wide. He was like literally built like a brick wall, yeah. mm. like walking with this with a head on top. I never, it was the most, he was the most impressive person. And I would see, I saw, you know, so Ewing, I saw Jordan, I saw, uh, That's you know, my guy. all those guys. Yeah, yeah your guy, <laughs> like uh, MJ. Yeah. MJ, you, you MJ. Call. that's what I call from him. the Windy City. Okay, here, I want to ask you a question. I love this, go. Do you know, can you name his uniform number. 
Can you name another uniform that he might have worn as a pro? There's two. There's two. 35. It's, you're, you got one number right. 32. No, you got that number wrong. I got that number wrong. Yeah. I, and I said 23? You, you said, did say yeah. 23. 45. 45, mm-hmm. that's right. See? Does, do you remember kids walking around with a 45? Oh, yeah, and I hated it. And you hated it. Yeah. Because yeah. you were interested in what at that point? 23, MJ. But what? No, your, your interests at that point in life were what? You were interested in what? Let's see. The year is 1999. Simpsons. I'm seven years old. I'm watching The Simpsons, Rocket Power, SpongeBob, mm-hmm. uh, thinking about Y2K, and uh, mm-hmm. taking big naps. Sure. Okay, well, that's... No, nope. you know, when I was seven, the game Kobe Bryant courtside came out. Okay, mm-hmm. and that was like my first basketball game that I like played off. And then M- once NBA Live two thousand three came out, oh, mm-hmm. it was over. You yeah. played that, right? I Everybody played NBA played Street. Did you play NBA Street? Ever? Yeah, I did, but yeah. I didn't like it as much arcade yeah. style. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was more of a simulation guy myself. Now, when you would play a game like that, would you try to get the players to not be on a court and be <laughs> anywhere <laughs> other than that? Yeah, Riding the back of a garbage truck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You try to get them to go into like. Uh, like a finance building and <laughs> yeah. see if you could walk them in and talk about long-term investments uh-huh. and their portfolio. Yeah. We're mostly talking <laughs> stocks. NBA <laughs> portfolio. Kevin likes to play NBA 2K now and go yeah. through the whole story mode. And then uh-huh. once it's time for the player, just to, he just retires. Sh- yeah. He retires. Retire. <laughs> we stopped the game uh, there. At 19 years old. <laughs> did you ever see that person who did, I think it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. The person who did the simulation with NBA 2K and, created a league that was just like he gave zero like zero skill levels to all the no. custom players and it was just like the apocalypse rolling in <laughs> where suddenly no te- like it's like this guy led the league with two points a game and it's just like it was one of the funniest things it's online it's I got so something funny to watch on youtube when i get home i just watched uh the then he did the the jordan challenge no 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 what did i just watch that was really good we watched a game from every decade. Okay. Just to see how the game has evolved, see if the game is actually uh-huh. better now than yeah. it was in, in other years. The answer is yes. That's better now. I think so. Mm-hmm. Are you a big 80s basketball fan? I, I like 90s, honestly, because that was, um, I just thought it was, the the Knicks were good in the 90s. And mm-hmm. it was always fun to root for a team that was basically the, basically the, the bullies of the league. That's yeah. what they were, more or less. And it was fun to have to be cheering for the bullies because every game, it was like a vice would get turned because yeah. they would get, they would get, their de- defense would get tighter and tighter. And you just knew the other team would pop at a point in the, like in uh, Casino when his head is in the vice. <laughs> at some point, that eye is yeah, going to come flying out of the. Here's the what the Charles Oakley book brought up for me mm-hmm. with those teams. And it's the same thing The Last Dance brought up. Sure. Those Bulls teams were beatable. The way that they're romanticized mm-hmm. now is that Michael Jordan scored 100 points a game mm-hmm. and nobody could do anything with these teams. Okay. And then you read the Charles Oakley book, mm-hmm. you watch The Last Dance, you see that these games, these teams were literally losing these games, taking mm-hmm. the teams to six and seven games and losing mm-hmm. by two, three points mm-hmm. over just bad basketball plays. But I will say this, if because because Draymond Green, I was talking about this earlier in the show, Draymond Green just said that the 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 Warriors would have uh would have blown out the '90s Bulls, mm-hmm. and I don't believe that. I think it would be it would be it depends on who's who's playing by what rules. Then. Yeah, or if the Warriors are playing by '90s Bulls rules, then you're going to have uh Steph Curry's going to get a broken nose within three minutes of the game, and somebody will get a foul for for basically <laughs> breaking his nose, and he will be not as carefree and and freewheeling as he yeah. drives the lane. But defensive sets back then, especially like the defensive rules that mm-hmm. that that went away in what after the 98 yes. series. Yes, yeah, when they started when they took the hand checking away and not all. just hand checking just defense like uh it helped defense like sure. some rule that was that I don't even remember mm-hmm. cuz I was too young at the time but like I just saw it on that era mm-hmm. video that I watched. It's something about help defense that was taken away where a player couldn't like on the weak side, a player couldn't drop back into okay. a, a certain zone. He had to sure, stay so, yeah, just because so, they really they pulled the zone defense out of the like they 
there was even more restrictive. Yeah. To, yeah. And then so the uh, so to combat that, the offensive team would just like the the ninety eight Jazz mm-hmm. just stayed up, had one player that's always above the three point line. So yeah. if that's Steph mm-hmm. and they don't and they don't have a defensive uh, mm-hmm. shift on that, mm-hmm. you would just dump that to Steph all day. And he's just gonna make that shot all day. Yeah, but I would say the difference is though that you'd also have somebody would be covering Steph. Michael Jordan would take Steph as his defensive assignment, okay, and he would wear him out. I just but conversely, then say you take the Bulls and put them in the present day. Mm-hmm. Well, the reality is Tony Kukoc is going to score 25 points a game because mm-hmm. he's made for today's NBA. He was a soft. Everybody made fun of him back then. He would clean up now. A big shooter yeah. like that who, yeah. who could handle the ball to a degree, yeah. he would he would be a, a capital S star in the NBA now. Sure. So I just think certain players would pop more now that might not – might not have then they yeah. would clean up if the game if by playing by the the more uh like lax uh defensive rules now well tom i'm glad we don't get to see it you know what? and the other thing is i'll say this i hate all of this what if stuff <laughs> yeah. i don't know i hate when i fall for it and i yeah. start chewing on it and i i just i feel bad about i'm starting myself. to hate i'm starting to hate lists like yeah. anytime oh, they yeah. top five yeah like i heard somebody say recently that a, a player is top five dead or alive mm-hmm. Who said what? I can't remember who it was. Oh, it was Darvin Ham mm-hmm. uh, talking about LeBron James. And yeah. he said he's top five dead or alive. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of get that more. I, he's my GOAT. LeBron's sure. my yeah, number yeah, one. Yeah. But, like, I I get the top five dead or alive thing because mm-hmm. it kind of makes it, like, you know, who knows where, yeah. where, where anybody is fitting in that. Mm-hmm. But lists are making it so because then you got people now – Talking about who's top five in the league right now when you for, yeah. when you're forgetting that like LeBron James going into his twentieth year. Um, well, yeah. Still it's, it's insane. And still nobody can like guard him. Nobody has ever that's why I would say you are you are completely right. LeBron James is truly the best player the NBA has ever seen. Yeah. Because he is literally like a video game an NBA two K player come mm-hmm. to life where you could decide, hey, what if I uh get uh five steals or I'm going to go for blocks today. He can do any of those. He can do whatever he wants to do. He yeah. can decide that night, I'm going to get 10 assists, and yeah. he can do that. I'm going to get 15 rebounds. He could do that. Michael Jordan could not get the do the rebounding the way LeBron could choose to rebound. Mm-hmm. So that's why I just feel like that's what differentiates those two guys, is that LeBron can truly do anything. Yeah, I think I, th- I think he's the best. Uh, mm-hmm. People, Everybody's got their arguments about it. Yeah. I'm tired of talking about it. Me too, but yeah, you like brought it up again. No, I want to talk about it with you, yeah, yeah. but I'm tired of talking about it in, mm-hmm. in regular life, you know, because yeah. everybody's, mm-hmm. uh, everybody's got a thing. Yeah. What would you rather talk about? In regular life? Yeah. Man, there's so much going on. There's oh. so many things going on. Okay. Oh my top. gosh! Like basketball. Yeah. Damn. Like no. Let's talk about who's top five. Bas- oh, 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 oh yeah. I did it again. Yeah. Kevin, uh, did you collect Pogs? You seem like you like Pogs. I don't know what Pogs are. Are those like action figures? No, they were little discs. Are you but, for real? You don't know what Pogs are? We're I mean, not that far apart in age. Maybe Kevin. if I yeah. saw a picture of them, I would recognize it. It was like the little. They used to have like you could get like teams on them. I used to have an NFL set. Yeah. I remember having like all the NFLs. It was like a game. I never learned how to play the game. P A W G P O G P A W G S. Google that. You're trolling. You're to, trolling. Uh, open now. up a private window and yeah. and Google P A W G. Oh, I've seen yeah. that. Okay. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Got it. Did no. you collect anything as a child, Kevin? Uh, Pokemon cards. I grew up in the '90s. That was like a big part of my like mm-hmm. upbringing. Sure. And um, are you one of these people doing Pokemon Go? You're walking into a car wash and uh, <laughs> trying to catch a Charizard, and you're uh, you're going into a nursing home because you heard a Snorlax was in there, <laughs> and you're like going on government property, <laughs> trying to catch squirrels. Walking on a tarmac. I worked yeah. at an old folks' the home. Tarmac. <laughs> He's at the airport. Yeah. <laughs> you see one guy looking at his phone, trying to catch a Pokemon. Wait, is that Kevin from Hollywood <laughs> Handbook? What's he doing on the runway? Um, did I tell you about when I was an activities director at an old folks home in Beverly Hills? Do you think you told me this already? <laughs> you know you didn't <laughs> tell me this. Te- please, I want to hear about it. Okay, I was a waiter for a couple weeks, and then I wasn't doing a good job waiting, so they moved me to a different position. 
where uh, I would fix people's phones mm-hmm. and then go to the movies and like go out to restaurants and stuff okay. with them. And I did that for a year. Okay. And um, we almost got kicked out of a museum because everyone was like touching the art and stuff. And uh, <laughs> it was fun. It the was old people were touching art. Yeah, I was a fourth grade teacher, mm-hmm. and then the right after that, I was at the old folks' home. Okay. Yeah, life is a highway. Yeah. Yeah. The um. Yeah, you know, look, Kevin. You get it. people give you a hard time. People give you hard no. Time. No, they do. Trust me, they do. Oh, <laughs> I you're all right in my book. You're, you're all right in my you, book. You earned it. Well, I didn't. I didn't ask for that. I know. Take the compliment. You're all right in my book. You earned it. You showed me something, and you you clawed your way through this podcast world to become who you are now. Yeah. I uh, yeah. Speaking of the tarmac, I, I flew a couple of days ago from <laughs> South Carolina to Chicago, then Chicago to. Los Angeles, and I was just like, I was already just like, I gotta get sleep because I'm gonna do a 24 hour show in a day and a half. And we get to Chicago, and we're just getting ready to take off. And uh, then the captain's like, uh, "Okay, we got a uh, problem here uh, on the plane. One of the passengers leaving the plane, so we have to get their suitcase off the plane, also, because they're worried that somebody's got like a bomb in, or I guess is what they you have. If a passenger yeah, leaves, passenger they, their leaves. luggage needs to go with absolutely. Them. So we're sitting on the plane, thirty minutes. No joke, thirty minutes. The captain goes, uh, "Great news, everybody. Uh, we got the door open for the uh, luggage. They got the door open. Like, don't say this is great news. This is terrible <laughs> news. You didn't get the yeah. suitcase. It's great news. And now we're going to get in there and find that suitcase. And I was at that point, I was just like, I'm ready to take my chances. I'm going to assume. <laughs> I'll see. I'll take my chances that this person was not, this was not their master plan. They had a suitcase full of explosives and mm-hmm. they, they got off the plane. They're going to be like, hey, hey, like push the yeah. plunger. <laughs> like, I'll take my chances that that was not a part of the plan. Let's just get to Los Angeles. But just the way he said, uh, "Great news, everybody! Uh, we got the door open." On the th- I, was... I feel like people on planes are always taking the chance. Like anytime mm-hmm. something is like weird on a plane and somebody's mm-hmm. complaining about it, I'm mm-hmm. like, "Man, do you want to die?" Like yeah. anytime they're like, "It's going to be a little bit of delay, folks. Yeah. We got uh, there's an issue, a mechanical issue with this yeah. and that, and somebody, some dudes next to me yeah. with a Wall Street Journal going." Oh! Oh! I'm oh. like, bro, do you just want to take off without it? I, let let yeah. me off this yeah, plane. Take, you can yeah, go. Yeah, that. See, that's the thing. A mechanical issue. It's like, yeah, yeah. let's fig- let's yeah. sort that out first. What is with people getting off planes these days? I just recently. So I, I'm a person who, if I have a really early flight, I won't yeah. sleep the night before. Oh, me neither. So yeah. I can sleep on the plane. Yeah. It it always ends up bad because the short the plane ride is always shorter than what you yeah. think it's going to be, and mm-hmm. now you're working on two and a half hours of sleep. Yeah. But last time I was flying back from. I was flying back from New York, and this is like a month ago, and this girl has an anxiety attack, Mm -hmm. and we already, we're in line to take off, and we got to turn, the the Mm -hmm. captain's got to turn the plane around, and Mm -hmm. and get back to the, yeah, big steering wheel, yeah, yeah, on the back of the, (laughs) yeah, turn around, he's got to, he's Got to we got to go back to the gate to let this girl off the plane. Yeah, and I'm like, y'all don't get that girl some Xanax or some champagne yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah, just like do what the rest of us are doing. You don't think the rest of us are medicating on this thing? For real, it's six forty five in the morning. Yeah, exactly. I was I'm coming just, back from Miami. That it was Miami flight. Yeah, where the girl mm-hmm. wanted to get off. Yeah, I couldn't believe. I was like, wow, she she did all that, and she was in the back. Yeah. So she definitely was mm-hmm. was not. It wasn't a quick walk. No, no. That's you had that. plenty of time to say, I don't want to take this yeah, flight. Yeah, that's that walk. You figure it out. You don't get on the point. You just go like, I can't do this. I can't mm. do this. Yeah, I'm, uh, I just, uh, whenever, I, if I ever get a chance, if I fly business class or something, you do that and you're sitting in business class. Well, fly coach, you walk past business class. You're mm-hmm. just like, look at these, mm-hmm. these snobs, these <laughs> jerks, these, what? How dare they get? The, what did they do to get these seats? These, Wait, let me tell you something, crooks. Tom. When you're black and up there, uh-huh. people love to comment on it. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Like, yeah, I can only you know, imagine. It's like, what? Yeah, yeah. So what you got going on in your life, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you're a rapper? Yeah. You're one of those rappers? <laughs> you're one you, of those rappers. <laughs> yeah. like, but, so that's what it's like when you coach. But then when I'm in business class, just like, look at these losers. <laughs> going past these 
these they should just put them in Pathetic. steerage <laughs> yeah. with the animals in the in the bed. But it's just like it's amazing how fast my my class yeah. associations yeah. change yeah. just yeah. based on one plane ticket. I love how I mean, you know, productions will fly you out first class and but I haven't gotten lucky mm-hmm. yet. It's always a damn baby in first class. I uh-huh. feel like they should be banned. Forgive me for being class. No, I get it. But the babies in first class. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, that's when I get in my class. class. The baby does it to you. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, come on, man. What yeah. are you get this goddamn baby up here yeah. for? <laughs> like, yeah. I got. Yeah. I got stuck. The classic thing. I got the aisle seat. Some other dude got the window seat, and we're we're staring at that empty seat, and we're just saying like, please, please. And then you see the things start to thin out, and you're just like, I think we got it. I think we got this. And then it's just like magic. Here comes. The craziest family on <laughs> <Yeah>. earth <laughs> coming through, holding like pizzas yeah. and things. And I'm just like, look, if I had a family, it seems like a living nightmare to try to fly with yeah. four kids. God bless them. That's a that's hell to me to have to wrangle all your kids on a plane. Yeah. And then the kids, everybody was sitting at different spots. And this one kid, he sat next to me. He's like 12. Immediately puts his foot. Like like crosses his leg over with his shoe going my way right into my space, and I'm just like, you gotta move. I guess, hey, you just gotta keep it clear for the thing. And then he does. Oh, sorry. Then the plane takes off. He does it again and immediately falls asleep. Oh, and I'm stuck with this sleeping kid who, yeah, it's just I'm not co- equipped for the world still. I don't think I still. I think I'm still ready for another pandemic. Round. Me and Gabrus was you know John Gabrus. Yeah, yeah. We were sitting together. Uh, going on Doughboys tour, and uh, we're both very large men, mm-hmm. and we got the aisle in the window seat. Sure, and we're like, hell yeah! And yeah. they're like, well, I'll just say prepare for cross check. Yeah, just say please, prepare please. for cross check. <laughs> yeah, and then this lady gets on and me yeah. and comes and sit right in between. She's yeah. really tiny. Yeah, but I'm like. Lady, it's not gonna be fun, I mean, for, you, gonna be fun for you, ma'am. <laughs> like <laughs> you gonna have to take both of these elbows. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Now, so so, what's the rest of uh, 2022 for you, Carl? What do you got? Do you uh, the got rest of for me, I start shooting my show in September, and so which the lady did watch okay. in between us. So season she, two, she asked me if I was one of those rappers, and she mm-hmm. said, and I was like, no, I'm one of those TV actors. Mm-hmm. And season two starts shooting. That's amazing. Uh, in a couple weeks, it's a really funny show. Thank you and so you're much. Really funny. It's called Grand it. Crew for those yeah. who don't know, yeah. and uh, we're just talking about it. And uh, Thank you for thank you for saying yeah, that. Yeah, no, it's, and, it's legitimately uh, funny. The lady who sat in between me and Gabriel mm-hmm. did watch a couple episodes right next mm-hmm. to me. It was awkward and flattering at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, did she laugh out loud at all? She was. She was laughing. Mm-hmm. She was getting down. Yeah, she was. Uh, I was like, "That's my part, right?" I would look over, mm-hmm. <laughs> make sure it was me that she That's was me. laughing at. Yeah, it's me. She's laughing at. <laughs> yeah, but just other than that, uh, we got some uh, tour dates. I might I might pop out on the Comedy Bang Bang tour. I don't know yet. Okay, that's coming up. Yeah, so that'd we'll be see. exciting. So, but you got your 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 dance cards full for the rest of the year. That's mm, awesome. Yeah. Congratulations on everything, Kevin. The ne- the 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 Flager ones network, the Hollywood Handbook franchise. The franchise is going well. I have a big video project. I'm working on it uh, for the Flager ones. I haven't told them yet, so you're the first person I'm telling. Okay. Yeah, I think it's uh-huh. going to be very exciting, and it's probably going to come out later this year. Okay. Big, That's exciting. Big video. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you got, uh, yeah, Hayes and Sean. Maybe then Sean. we'll see them at some point here. I don't Ooh. know. Yeah, not, uh, here. not the, uh, not the, the most communicative guys. No, no, sometimes. no. Actually, right. yeah, they're th- Hayes, and they definitely will be communicative right now. It's late. Yeah, Hayes. My ma- my mailbox is full, Davenport. <laughs> yeah, that's him right there. The mailbox is full. Yeah. <laughs> it's um no, I love those guys. You know that, and uh, look, I've been on Hollywood Handbook more than anyone else. I know you're the, the best. number one for a reason guest. Mm-hmm. The episode that everybody cites is is podcast history. Mm-hmm. Grease knows eggs. Yep. It's legendary. Yeah. Will haunt Sean Clements till his final days. It will. It has that, been. That a legendary episode of Hollywood Handbook is he's not on. Yeah. Look. Well, that's your effect. You got the goods. You got yeah. the goods. You're the MJ. Yeah. I Thank you. Which is short for? Um, Mr. Jordan. Mr. Jordan. Mr. There Jordan. you go. Yes. <laughs> well, 
Carl Tart, Kevin Bartel, I really appreciate you both coming in, Thank especially you, so late. This is such yes. a thrill, and you guys are so funny. And, uh, you know, I will we'll do stuff later this year. I'd love to see you both in any means of ways. Me too. Hell yeah. yeah. Thanks, right. Thanks so much. Thank You're you the best. so much. Awesome. And let's go to, where are we at? Let me check the itinerary. Oh, it's 127. Ay, ay, ay. That's not bad. It's not bad. We're getting there. Go home and eat a lemon bar. <laughs> Who's going to go home and eat a lemon bar? Me. You are, not me. I got another 17 hours. You want me to bring you some lemon bars? I live near you. No, I'm okay. I'm okay. I got uh, I to pace myself with the food. <laughs> I got to pace myself because they had pizza. I'm just like, oh, I'm going to do it. And I'm just, all I could picture is me just be like, at 7 a.m. Yeah. being like, I don't feel good. How did the bun eating contest go? Oh, good. I ate 68 hot dog buns. <laughs> Damn. No. It, so apparently that's the running joke. <laughs> of the, of the thing. Um, no, but I'm going to, what am I going to do now? Oh, we're going to do, uh, I'm gonna do karaoke next. Wow. Listener chosen karaoke. Oh, no. This is a bad decision. <laughs>